that the government has to be tough and cannot let China have access to our leading edge technology. The administration DM'd me saying that I misunderstood and Huawei was actually way behind. There's a data center operating in China right now that shouldn't exist. Not because it's illegal, but because the technology inside it was supposed to be impossible to build under current U.S. export restrictions. Yet somehow, against all odds and predictions, it's running. And it's fast. This facility, powered by Huawei's new CloudMatrix 384 system, delivers nearly double the performance of NVIDIA's comparable solution. That's not a typo. A Chinese company, cut off from advanced semiconductor manufacturing and restricted from purchasing cutting-edge chips, has built an AI computing system that outperforms the global leader. How did they pull this off? The answer involves thousands of optical connections, massive power consumption, some genuinely clever engineering workarounds, and a strategy that might fundamentally reshape the global AI infrastructure race. This is the deep-seek moment for AI data centers. And understanding how Huawei accomplished this reveals something crucial about where artificial intelligence hardware is actually heading, the GPU that was never supposed to exist. U.S.-China export controls on AI chips and semiconductor technology were explicitly designed to prevent exactly this scenario. The restrictions aim to maintain American technological advantage by denying China access to the most advanced chips and manufacturing equipment. Yet Huawei has somehow designed and deployed the Ascend 910C GPU, their answer to NVIDIA's state-of-the-art Blackwell architecture. According to official specifications, this GPU delivers 800 teraflops of compute at 16-bit precision. To put that in context, it's four times more powerful than NVIDIA's H20, the most advanced chip NVIDIA is legally permitted to sell inside China. However, it remains three times less powerful than NVIDIA's GB200, the actual chip Huawei's GPU is designed to compete against. Still, the fact that it exists at all represents a significant achievement. Huawei followed a similar architectural strategy to NVIDIA's Blackwell design, implementing a double die configuration. At the high level, there are two GPU dies linked by an interconnect bridge, with each die surrounded by four memory modules. This approach effectively doubles the amount of compute power and memory capacity per GPU package. The chip also features state-of-the-art memory technology with higher bandwidth and operates at least twice as efficiently in terms of performance per watt compared to previous generations. But here's where things get genuinely interesting and somewhat controversial. Reports suggest this new Huawei GPU is manufactured at 7 nanometer scale by TSMC. If accurate, that raises profound questions about how these chips reach China despite export restrictions. Are they being manufactured using older equipment before restrictions took effect? Are they being routed through intermediaries? The sourcing remains murky, but what's undeniable is that these chips are now powering systems inside China. Yet the GPU itself isn't what makes this story remarkable. What Huawei built around that GPU is where things get truly fascinating and slightly insane. The system that changes everything. Huawei didn't just design a competitive GPU. They wrapped it in a system architecture so unconventional that it fundamentally alters the performance equation. The Cloud Matrix 384 is built from 384 of these 910C GPUs, positioned as China's homegrown alternative to NVIDIA's NVL72 system. Here's where the comparison gets interesting. NVIDIA's NVL72 contains 72 GPUs connected via NVLink, using 36 NVLink switches to interconnect all processors in a flat topology that allows multiple GPUs to communicate directly. These connections are predominantly electrical, meaning copper cables. The complete system delivers 180 petaflops of FP16 compute. Huawei's Cloud Matrix, by contrast, contains 384 GPUs, over five times more processors than NVIDIA's system. With that massive scaling, they've managed to nearly double the raw performance, and there's likely room to scale even further. But this performance advantage comes with a significant cost that reveals the fundamental trade-off Huawei made. At the system level, power efficiency looks terrible. The cloud matrix consumes approximately 600 kilowatts versus NVIDIA's 145 kilowatts. Huawei's solution burns through four times more electricity to deliver roughly double the performance. Why such massive power consumption? The answer lies in a radical architectural decision that nobody else is making at this scale. Going all in on optics, both NVIDIA and Huawei employ a flat, all-to-all -all architecture where every GPU can communicate with every other GPU, 
But the fundamental difference is that Huawei relies on optical connections not just between racks, which is becoming standard, but between individual GPUs as well. NVIDIA's NVL72 uses approximately 1,500 copper cables to interconnect all 72 Blackwell GPUs and NVLink switches within racks. This approach significantly reduces complexity and cost, running about six times cheaper than optical alternatives. It's also substantially more power efficient, saving roughly 20 kilowatts of power per rack compared to optical solutions. Huawei went completely optical. Imagine each of 384 GPUs optically connected to the network fabric with multiple optical transceivers. That means thousands upon thousands of optical transceivers operating simultaneously throughout the system. Going optical provides massive bandwidth advantages. You can transmit enormous amounts of data in parallel, but those optical transceivers consume tremendous power, and maintaining a system with thousands of optical connections creates reliability challenges that copper systems simply don't face. It's genuinely failure-prone at this scale. This explains why NVIDIA is now moving towards silicon photonics, integrated optical solutions that deliver bandwidth advantages while dramatically reducing power consumption. But silicon photonics at scale remains years away from widespread deployment. Huawei couldn't wait for that technology to mature. They needed a solution now that could work with components available today. So they made a calculated trade-off, sacrifice power efficiency to achieve performance scaling using currently available optical technology. For their specific situation, this might actually make sense. Why power consumption might not matter. Here's the counterintuitive part. Chinese customers probably won't care much about quadruple power consumption, unlike the United States and Europe, where data center power consumption faces increasing scrutiny and cost pressures, China operates under different constraints. First, the cost of energy in China is cheaper than in the US. Second, over the past several years, China has massively expanded its power grid capacity using renewables like solar, hydro, wind, and increasingly nuclear power. Unfortunately, their energy mix still includes approximately 50% from coal and oil, which remains environmentally problematic. But from a pure availability and cost perspective, they have power capacity to spare. In the long term, the cost of artificial intelligence will converge to the cost of energy. China has made enormous infrastructure investments to ensure they won't be constrained by power availability. From their perspective, building a less power-efficient system that actually works and can be manufactured domestically might be preferable to waiting indefinitely for access to more efficient foreign technology they can obtain. This represents a genuine strategic difference. While Western companies optimize obsessively for power efficiency because electricity costs money and data center capacity is constrained, China is optimizing for capability and domestic production, accepting higher power consumption as an acceptable trade-off for technological independence. The software stack nobody talks about. Hardware alone doesn't make a functional AI system. The cloud matrix runs on Huawei's proprietary CAN software stack. Similar in concept to NVIDIA's CUDA but built specifically for their architecture, this software handles everything from compilers to graph optimization to workload distribution across hundreds of GPUs. CAN is optimized for Huawei's NPUs, or Neural Processing Units, specialized silicon components designed to accelerate AI tasks like matrix multiplication and tensor processing. These are built on Huawei's proprietary DaVinci architecture, developed entirely in-house. The software layer plays an absolutely critical role in the cloud matrix system because when you have 384 GPUs connected by thousands of optical links, system complexity explodes. Failures become more likely. Coordinating computation across that many processors requires sophisticated software to maintain efficiency. CAN is what makes this unwieldy hardware configuration actually functional. China has historically been very strong in software development and that strength is showing here. While they lag in cutting-edge semiconductor manufacturing, their software capabilities help compensate by extracting maximum performance from the hardware they can produce. Manufacturing The persistent challenge Despite these achievements, manufacturing remains China's most significant bottleneck. Reports suggest the 910C GPU dies are still manufactured by TSMC at 7 nanometer scale and somehow brought into China, though definitive proof of sourcing remains elusive. What's certain is that China still depends heavily on the United States and Europe for the most critical semiconductor manufacturing technologies and tools. Even as they work to develop domestic alternatives, achieving high yields and consistent quality at advanced nodes remains challenging. But it's ultimately just a matter of time, funding, and persistence. 
all of which China possesses in abundance. They're methodically building parallel supply chains, developing domestic alternatives to every critical component, and investing enormous sums in closing the technology gap. The next generation of Huawei GPUs, the Ascend 9, 10D, and 920, are already in production. Each iteration moves closer to matching or exceeding Western performance while relying less on foreign supply chains. The water problem, nobody's discussing. Long term, AI infrastructure faces constraints beyond semiconductors and energy. Water consumption is emerging as a critical limiting factor that almost nobody talks about publicly. A typical 100 megawatt data center consumes approximately 2 million liters of water daily. While some recycling techniques exist, water cannot be recycled indefinitely. In most cases, around 70 to 80 percent simply evaporates during cooling processes. Now imagine building a 2,000 megawatt data center in a region with limited water resources. The environmental and resource implications become severe very quickly. China is exploring unconventional solutions. In March, they launched the first operational underwater AI data center off the coast of Sanya, Hainan. The concept involves placing computing infrastructure underwater to enable direct seawater cooling, theoretically reducing power consumption and resource demands. Maintenance becomes a nightmare, of course. Repairs require retrieving components from underwater, meaning extended downtime, and the potential negative effects on marine ecosystems from waste heat and infrastructure presence are concerning and poorly understood. Whether underwater data centers prove viable remains uncertain, but the fact that China is seriously experimenting with such approaches indicates how seriously they're thinking about long-term resource constraints on AI infrastructure growth what this actually means. This Huawei story illustrates something fundamental that's often missed in discussions about AI hardware. It's no longer just about building the best GPU. It's about building complete systems and infrastructure. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang frequently emphasizes that NVIDIA has evolved into an infrastructure company, not merely a chip company. In the real world, systems and infrastructure matter more than individual component specifications. Huawei is clearly years behind in pure silicon performance, but they found workarounds at the system level through networking architecture and software optimization. They built a less elegant solution that actually works and can be manufactured largely domestically. This represents a genuine challenge to assumptions about how technology restrictions would impact Chinese AI capabilities. Export controls were supposed to create an insurmountable barrier. Instead, they've stimulated rapid domestic development of parallel ecosystems. The question isn't whether China can build AI infrastructure anymore. They demonstrably can, even if it's less efficient than Western alternatives. The question is how quickly they'll close the remaining gaps and what happens to global AI competition when they do. Huawei's Cloud Matrix 384 isn't just a data center. It's proof that determined nations with sufficient resources can engineer their way around technology restrictions, even if the solutions they develop are unconventional and costly. That has profound implications for technology policy, global competition, and the future of artificial intelligence development. The era of assuming Western technological dominance in AI infrastructure is quietly ending. The systems being built in China today, while imperfect, are good enough to power domestic AI development independently, and they're improving rapidly. Whether that's cause for concern or simply the inevitable result of restricting access to technology depends entirely on your perspective, but the reality is undeniable. China is building its own AI future, restrictions or not, one massive, power-hungry, optical link-filled data center at a time.